Hey guys, how's it going? It's Chris here and welcome to my dreadlock journey. Today I wanted to talk about uh, basically my experience with getting dreadlocks, my history behind the idea of them, and my fascination behind them, and really just my, my experience going through this entirely new hairstyle. I have something I've never done before, but I've always just been fascinated in. Now for me, dreadlocks have always been kind of like a background thing. I never really thought about the style too much until I started getting into some music where the, uh, where the musicians, the vocalists, the artists were sporting dreadlock styles, such as like Korn, uh, Waylon Revis from Mushroomhead, which, which directly inspired the style that I have now, which is like a dread mohawk undercut. Ever since I saw those, I was always fascinated by the, by the idea of it. Just, you know, hair being clumped together and moving around freely on its own and being able to like pull them apart and just, just, I don't know, just the look of it was always just so interesting to me. I've always, you know, I'm gonna have some pictures going along with this from different hairstyles that I've done, but I've always kind of put off doing dreadlocks because I didn't know anything about it, you know, it, it's you don't learn until you need to learn and I never gave the time to understand them because where I live it's not, well first of all it's not exactly a popular style because we, I live around a bunch of old white people who don't understand what like an emo swoop is. The style around here was always very tight-knit, everyone looked the same for the most part. You had the few standouts, whatever have you, but it was, and especially, you know, speaking not only about, like, not only about just generally who's around me with age, but also culturally and by skin color, if you want to look at it like that, like, there was no, no black people, no ethnic people around me, so I didn't have that direct exposure. Culturally, everything was just very stagnated, so that's something I would have had to go out of my way to learn about, which I just never really did, but I always liked the idea of it. Especially just from seeing Jonathan Davis and Waylon Revis with their dreadlock styles. And for the longest time, I was just kind of thought, you know, one day, one day I'll do it. And here I am now. I've been looking forward to doing this style for about 10 years now. I'm t turning 27 in less than a month. And I finally have my hairstyle goal. And this is it. These are my dreads right here. It's, uh, yeah. You can see that nice and long. Now this is all natural hair, but only half of it is mine. Some of it is hair that I, is extensions that I did get put in. And I'm going to play a slideshow going along, like I said, on here somewhere on screen, of the dreadlock process. Now originally, as you can see, my hair is uh, it's kind of dead looking, kind of um, choppy, a little bit uh, disorganized, uh, different lengths. That's because I tried dreading it myself before. I was taking it, I was doing twist, um, uh, twists and nodding and doing a, just way too many products and I tried that off and on for like four three or four months with my undercut style just a long undercut style and as a result I lost uh, some hair length and my hair length varied I didn't get it cut or clean up because of the pandemic so I was kind of stuck with the hair that I had and it was its natural color mostly which I don't ever I never liked anyway after I did that I finally decided I'm gonna go and find a place where I can actually get this, I'm gonna to go to a professional loctician and I'm gonna to talk to them about it, I'm gonna learn about it, and I'm actually going to get it, embed it into me because I've always wanted it. So I went to this, I went to a place in Manchester called um, Heavenly Touch, and it's the only place around here that I could find that did dreadlocks or any, any kind of style like that. There's nothing like that around me, it's super rural. So an hour and a half drive, and I get to this place, and uh, I speak to my hairdresser, Chantel, who is very nice, um, helped me understand a lot about it, a lot of the spirituality behind it, and uh, the cultural significance of it, and a lot of just the history of dreadlocks. So as she's going through my hair and kind of like setting aside patterns and stuff, she's teaching me about it. While I'm not the best at retaining information or relaying information that I've learned, it is still a part of me and I have now, I now have that context. She goes and she gets my hair locked. As you can see here, this is my hair after the first locking process. And I don't have a photo for every, like one, like a one photo a week or whatever, but I do have incremental photos going along. So after I got the locking done, which by the way, was an absolute misery. As somebody who has, uh, you know, tattoos, I have, you know, you have tattoos, piercings, septum done, whatever. I can handle pain, pain's not a problem to me, but getting my hair, uh, locked and pulled. I don't know what it was. It was just such a sensitive procedure of getting my scalp just tugged and scraped and twisted and locked and tight. Dude, it was a misery and I hated it. It was three and a half hours in the chair of just agony and it was horrible. And it was by far the worst I'd experienced 
above all my tattoos and piercings, like absolutely. And I don't know why, like sure, some people might be scoffing at me or whatever, but everyone experiences pain differently and the top of my head was crazy sensitive. So that was not fun. So after having um, dealt with the uh, recovery, recovery process of the hair nodding and doing its thing and trying to like watch like TP Locks, uh, that channel on YouTube and a bunch like uh, just a myriad of other channels on YouTube just talking about dreadlocks and just kind of learning about the do's and don'ts, what I should and shouldn't know. Um, we arrived at my next appointment like a month later where we got them, you know, checked on, retwisted and done again. You know, as, she, as we went along and did the retwisting process, I'm experiencing all these things I never thought of just like, well one, how <laughs> my head shape and just how weird it looked with the hair like that. And again, just the importance of keeping your hair uh, moisturized. It seemed like I was getting this done in uh, July. I want to say it was July. I don't know if it was June or July. It's almost uh, December now. So I got it done in July and it's almost December. Actually, I think a day or two, it's going to be December. Since then, the things I have learned about it have been um, just mind blowing. The process behind it, how much effort goes into it. And uh, just myself, how much I really took for granted all the other hairstyles I've ever done. Cause I'm gonna put a bunch of pictures on screen of other hairstyles that I have done. I am somebody that experiments with my hair. My hair is like the one key feature about me that I do like to drive confidence from. If my hair looks good, I feel good and I'm in a better mood. It's like the only thing about me. And it's stupid. I don't, I think it's an anime thing. So from growing up watching anime, just being obsessed with cool hairstyles and stuff. Hair has always been the center of my self-esteem, I guess. So if my hair looks good, I feel good. I've always experimented. I've always done everything I could with hair, different colors, different patterns, um, but doing dreadlocks has was a big step for me. I never went through with doing it because I guess the permanence of it was kind of daunting to me because I like to change it. I like to be able to wake up each day and today I'm gonna to do this with my hair and do that with my hair. Today I'm going, for this month, I'm gonna have my hair be this color and this style and I would just do it. If I wanted to do the mohawk, I would cut my own mohawk. If I wanted to do it as the long emo swoop, I would do the swoop. If, you know, if I wanted to put beads in my hair, I would put beads in my hair. I was constantly doing something and the idea of dreadlocks limiting what I could do with my hair really bothered me. And then the idea of having to grow it out for as long as I needed to and then not knowing the process in the beginning always kind of scared me but let me tell you after I actually got it done and I started living alongside the dreads you know because the dreads weren't just my hair they were something I cared for they were something I was paying attention to and nurturing and something I was very conscious of if it was raining outside a little bit I was very conscious not to get my hair too wet I hate I hate wet hair anyway but now I had a reason to not do that. I didn't want them to ruin my locks. I cared about the locks because of the time, the pain, and the money investment gone into them. They are something that I truly love. And now, I don't have to do much of anything to my hair and I can always do something with it to look good. I can have it off to one side. You know, I can have it uh, split on both ways and just kind of like down and about and I can wear a hat or whatever have you. I can throw it all forward if I want. Who cares, you know? I can put it in the back, I can put it in a ponytail, and I mean, I, I'm somebody who I think has a really good side profile, like front maybe not, but like a side profile is where it's at for me. I just, I just love it, man. So I had to, I had to deal with the process then of, the, the idea from the beginning was I always wanted to go and get extensions. I always wanted my hair to be long. I want to be able to, I know you really shouldn't, but I want to be able to, when I, when I have my nervous tick moments, instead of, you know, chewing on my cheeks or biting my finger skin or something, like those nervous, anxious ticks, I want to be able to just you know, lightly, just lightly play with my hair. I just, that kind of thing is really soothing to me. And while again, I want to do right by my hair, just having that long hair has always been the, the, the whole like cusp of the dream. Now I went through and I got my extensions, which wasn't that bad, uh, honestly. Then we had to retwist that same day. So that was, a, it was just a whole long process. And then um, I had to dye my hair, which I did Thanksgiving morning by myself. I just went through and I'm like, all right, my hair is an ashy, light brown, which looks awful, but it is the length I want. Now I just need to dye it black. So I just went through and I got the right kind of dyes and I dyed it black. And then this is the result. So what can I say about my log journey? Uh, it was definitely tough. And for me, who is somebody who's impatient with his hair and his appearance, wanting it to be as I see myself you know it was definitely a difficult journey in the sense of just being patient and again money money is a big factor too each appointment throwing 60 to 120 dollars to whatever we're doing for that day 
it adds up. And when you, when I, I think I've gone through four times for my hair. I've gone to the salon four times. So all in all, I've spent around $400 over the course of five months into my hair. But it's an investment that will, if I take care of it, last. I shouldn't have to get much done to my hair except for just, you know, washing it and retwisting it and I feel good. You know, I, I feel confident, more confident in myself. I feel good in my attire because I have a bit of like an alternative gothic uh, style, I guess you call it. I don't really like using those labels, but if you were to look at me when I'm walking around in public, you would probably determine me as some alt goth kind of thing. That's just a style I've always wanted to have since I was in like middle school, you know, in middle school, I was too afraid to experiment with my looks and I was too afraid to chase the styles that I enjoyed watching and that I enjoyed seeing. I couldn't see it within myself and I didn't have the dedication or the patience to grow my hair out and try things. Plus, you know, my parents wouldn't let me at the time, whatever. But as soon as I turned 18, I'm like, guess what I'm fucking doing? Dye my hair. So <laughs> it all went, it all went uphill from there. But yeah, I'm super comfortable now in my hair. I get compliments on it. I've gotten a couple compliments. I'm not much of a social person and with the pandemic and everything, it's not like I'm going anywhere and there's nowhere to go. My favorite thing is just getting old white prunes to look at me with just a, a look of stricken wonder and partial disgust. That's my f absolute favorite thing is to have the people around me look at me with eyes of judgment, just casting their own personal divine judgment is my favorite thing because I am just a walking middle finger to everyone around here <laughs> and it makes my day to see people get so upset because I look different and I'm not doing it for that reason it's just it's it's the you know it's the cherry on the cake you know it's just like I look good I feel good I love how I look and they hate it and that's the best part of my day so thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about my locks, I know it's kind of a free-form video. I didn't script any of this. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments below. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.